Hello. James. What's up, man? Yeah, this lockout. Where you at, man? I'm at the house. Oh, okay, you got you got a couple of minutes. We we about to talk about uh Smith. Yeah. All right, hold on right quick. All right, Cambria. Cambria? Yes. Okay, I got uh, James LaPrat on the phone. Say what's up to James. Hello. What's up? All right, so we we just got off the phone uh, with uh, Smith, Trans uh, Smith Transport out of... Hold on right quick. Let me get... Rolling Springs, Pennsylvania. Where, where they out of? Rowan Spring, Pennsylvania. Okay, that's that's where the corporate is at, right? Yep, and they got a terminal down in Ellenwood, Georgia. Okay, okay. So, James, man, give uh, give give us a little background from a from from a former driver point of view. No, um, well, when I was started with them, man, it was awesome. You know, it, it was family oriented. You know, Barry Smith was still involved in it. Um, you know, you weren't a truck number, you were actual uh, a name, you know, mm -hmm. good mileage, good pay. But then they brought Todd Smith in, you know, Barry stepped down a little bit and Todd Smith came in and they brought Joe Musselman in and all of them and they just went corporate. They, they went mega fleet, too quick, too fast, you know, you started becoming a number. Mm -hmm. You know, mileage started going down. You started sitting. You started waiting. The equipment started being tore up all the time. And, you now, know, now how how long you how long you used to drive for them? I don't know. I drove for them roughly two, a little over two years, two and a half years. Okay, so you you said in the beginning it was uh it was pretty good. It wasn't wasn't Smith uh Smith Transportation wasn't they like a sister company of U.S. Express at one point? Uh, I believe so. Okay, okay. Um, all right. So, unfortunately, my co-host kind of like got you know got ice cream freezed in the middle of the in the middle of the call. Um, I guess the, what would he say he was the vice president or something like that? Mm -hmm. So I guess the vice president was, was taking calls and he was mentioning about, uh, about the new packages that they was offering on the website because, you know, they, they hitting, they hitting social media hard of, you know, trying to promote, you know, trying to entice drivers to come over to the, to the company. Um, mm -hmm. in the midst of the call, uh, he, he asked my co-host for, you know, for, you know, for her information and she wanted to, you know, let him know that, you know, she was just, uh, doing her homework and unfortunately she got thrown off on that. Why, uh, let me ask you this, James, why would, why would, uh, why would Smith Transport uh, be worried about any other competition calling them up just to, you know, just for information gathering. I, I don't know, man. Um, there, there, there's some funny characters up in that office now, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Joe Muscle went to an old car salesman. I mean, he, he's one of them guys you, you can't, you can't trust him as far as you can throw him, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> Excuse me. Go you ahead. Know, and then, you know, Todd Smith, you know, the upper management there, I, I hate to say it, but the upper management there now is so full of shit, it's not even funny. You know, uh, they, there's a lot of broken promises now. You know, they, they tell the drivers they're out for them they're and, and this, that, and the other. But, you know, at the end of the day, they're, they're out for their self, you know. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, you know, Smith took a turn for the worse, you know. Like I said, I loved it there at one time, you know, I was making good money and, you know, and then of course I told you my situation yesterday with them, how right. I got handled, you know, and, uh. Well, what happened, sir, if you don't mind me asking? 
So I got terminated in December. Um, I had I I got a service dog, and uh, and there's another gentleman there that has a service dog, and we were in the cafeteria one day with our service dogs eating, you know, and uh, this this one gentleman come in there, and he had an attitude about us having our dogs in the cafeteria in the eating area. So he gave us an attitude all that day, you know, every time he seen us. But anyway, I, I went out there, and I went to sleep in my truck. The next morning, this guy come out and banging on my damn door, and he beating on the side of it like, you know, like he was the police or something. So I got up, and I got to the door, and I was like, can I help you? And uh, he he uh, had an attitude with me and said, you need to move your damn truck. You're blocking my trail. So I asked him, I said, dude, I said, you had an attitude yesterday and you got one this morning. I said, what's your problem with me and my dog? So he could just tell me, you know, to go F myself and my dog. And then uh, he proceeded to call me a honky. Oh, wow. So I looked back at him and I told him, I said, you want them there racist on some bitches. You know, because I'm the easiest going out there. I mean, I've been out here for a long time. And I'm by far a racist. You know, I'll, I'll help anybody as I can, you know. Everybody bleeds the same. Everybody gets dressed the same in my eyes, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but, yeah, anyway, they ended up terminating both of us for racial because he told them I called him the N-word, which is something I don't use and I don't do, you know. Um, anyway, we both ended up getting terminated over it. Even though I had witnesses and everything, they let me go, you know, so. Um, now, and then they put that on my DAC report. So, yeah, I, I've got an attorney involved in that. So I can't say too much more than what I've already said. Right, 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 right. Um, what, man, that's, that's, that's crazy. You know, a two year, a two year driver, you know, that's, that's, that's been, that's been good with the, that it sounds like you've been good with the company. I mean, you know, James LaPrat, 30 year driver. Uh, I I don't I, I don't see him I I don't see you I, I, saying I don't even know this man and I wouldn't see I can't see him saying nothing like that either. Right. Right. I'm sorry. I just I in my heart I can't see it. Yeah, I'm not like that. You know, I don't do this whole race thing. You know, everybody believes the same. I I don't care what you are, who you are, how you are. You treat me with respect, I'm going to treat you with respect. If you out there and you're a black man and you're hungry, I'm going to feed you. If, you, if you're a Mexican, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed you. If you're an Indian, I'm going to feed you. If, if you need help and you're not on drugs and this, that, and the other, I'm going to feed you. You know, quite a few times new drivers came there for orientation, you know, didn't have no money, this, that, and the other, you know. And I, I'd help them out and I'd buy them food and stuff, you know. I'm just that type fella. I, I just don't do the whole race thing, man. I just, you know, I don't believe in it. And, you know, anybody that is racist, I, I've got a problem with. I got you, man. Uh, before you before you left uh, Swift, I mean Swift, before you left, uh, before you left Smith Transportation, uh, how much did they bring you in at and then how much you left at? Um, I, I, I came in and I was trying to think, but, I mean, mm-hmm. My memory, I'm old, you know, and my memory's not that great. <laughs> I, I, I left, I came in at 48 cents, and I left at 53, I think it was, 54. Wow, 48 cents for a 30-year driver. That's that's a little low, bro. Yeah, but, you know, I, if I can make my bills and I can make a decent living, you know, I just enjoy truck driving, you know, I... I can get my disability right now, but I don't want to. You know, I enjoy driving. Um, I enjoy the company out on the road. You know, it has changed a lot. We had a previous interview about that, but uh, I, I enjoy it. You but know, you it's not about the money for me. It's about enjoying, you know, what I do for a living. If you don't enjoy what you're doing for your living, you're, you're going to be miserable your whole life. Well, you know, that's that, what I believe you, in. You, you know, they, they offering like several different packages now and i you know i'm i'm thinking i'm thinking why they doing that is because you know they they you know they they either they turnover rate is real high it's excruciating you know their turnover rate is at 73 percent if i'm not mistaken the last time i checked hell uh, no see 
I wouldn't see and, and like I said, it was something about that man when he was talking to me. I would never go nowhere like that. Um now, and then let me tell you about their pay package. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Mm-hmm. Now you talking about wait 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 you you you, you, you talking about their new pay package right because like I said they they I'm hit about all their pay packages oh okay go ahead go ahead here's the thing they don't tell you anything to get you in the door right but then when you get there they're gonna give you every excuse well oh you can't do that run because you live here or um you can't do that because you want to be home at this certain time and. They end up putting you on a whole different pay package. They, they they do that to bring you in, and then they give you every reason under the sun why you can't do this, and you can't do this run, and you can't do this dedicated run. Oh, that dedicated run's full right now, but we'll put you on a list, and then a year later you're still waiting on that list. You know that they they, they do that to get you in the door. Mm. You wasn't on the list in the first place. What what you say, Cambria? You was never on the list. You weren't on the list to start with. Mm. So it, it's like it, it it's like if I would have said, okay, well, well, put me on. I, I want to go if I you know come into orientation, and I say, yo, put me on this this pay package because this is what I want to do. You you would say that. Oh, okay. You 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 would say that they would say that it's. Oh well. That pay package is not available, but we'll put you on this pay right. package until that one becomes available, one comes and, it, available. and it never does. Right. Wow. Man. Mm-hmm. All right. So g- companies always, uh, always, you know, when they, when they talk about their companies, they always talk about the ESOP program, and I used to work for JNR Schwugel, and they they had a they had an ESOP program as well. <coughs> and what you and the guys, if you don't know what ESOP means, it's the it's the employee owned program. And my I, I come to learn that we don't own shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you that they're supposed to become the own over there, you know. But when it comes down to decision, the employees didn't have a say so when they change. Right. Well, I'll give you a perfect example. Why I was there? Our insurance package changed. Mm-hmm. None of the employees had a say in it. Only the upper management did. Mm-hmm. We didn't know until they done changed programs. And then a lot of us got screwed because a lot the, the one they went with was more expensive but covered twice as less. Mm, wait, more more expensive and and twice as less? What? Yeah. Like the insurance we had previously would cover uh, my cancer appointment, you know, because uh-huh. I, you know, previous cancer, I got to go to the cancer doctor every six months. Right. So the previous insurance. They would cover it. Well, with the new insurance taxes that they brought on, they wouldn't cover you know, the appointments. They wouldn't cover the heart specialist or the cancer specialist. They go, you know, twice a year to get my normal checkup. They wouldn't cover it. Um, half my prescriptions they wouldn't cover. You know, with the uh, package that they they went to. Wow. And I'm not the only driver. A lot of drivers, you know. Uh, another friend of mine. I'm not gonna mention his last name. His name I, I call him Mike. We'll call him Mike. Yeah, we'll call him Mike. Yeah. Um, he got screwed, man, because he was in the middle of having a bunch of medical procedures done, and the insurance was covering it, and then they switched it right in the middle of it. So he got ended up getting screwed and having to pay out of pocket for everything because the new insurance company wouldn't continue the treatments and the surgeries and stuff that he needed. So, therefore, he ends up having to finish paying out of pocket. Wow. That's crazy. James, how, how many how, how many miles that you was averaging over there? Um uh, I was averaging thirty two hundred miles a week. I was. Um I was on a dedicated lane, but it took me a while to get on it. I was on what they call the Ross Lane. I was running from uh Rock Hill, South Carolina, up to uh Jersey, and then I'd pick up in Jersey and go back to South Carolina. 
All right. So you so two years over there. So was you able to get um was you able to get vacation out of that yet, or or you left before you got vacation? No, I, I had vacation. Um, the vacation. And here's the thing: you couldn't take it when you wanted it. Um, you, you have to give uh, enough notice and then, you know, if you're on vacation that week and you're on a dedicated lane, they're like, well, uh, we ain't got nobody to cover your run that week. So if you take your vacation, you're going to work, you know, you, you possibility, you're going to lose your dedication run. Wow. So, I mean, they, so, I mean, they just play a lot of games over there, you know? Um, it used to not be like that, but like I said, Barry Smith got sick, and he stepped down, brought Todd Smith in as CEO, mm -hmm. you know, and then they brought that, that, that wannabe truck driving man, Joe Musselman, in, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then, of course, you know, they brought in all the other Musselmans, you know. There, there's only 20-something, you know, relatives in, in the office and stuff, you know. Once they brought one in, well, then he had to bring his mother and his brother and his sister and his cousin and his daddy's uncle, you know. So if your name was a certain name, you got special privileges. Mm. If you weren't in that clique, you had to hump your ass off to get anywhere in that company, you know. Oh, I know what that feels like. And then, you know, the other thing, too, um, it used to be if you were a good runner, you were looked out for well, now it's on how much ass you kiss and whose ass you kiss. Wow. And I don't kiss no ass. Wow. Man, I, you know, as, as you guys said before, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all said it. Always go to the drivers and, mm -hmm. and, and get, you know, get how they felt about it. Now, now, James, some people might say, you know, we, we might get some pushback from this video. Some people might say that you're a disgruntled driver. And and maybe uh maybe it's maybe you're disgruntled because of what of uh what you might have done. What what would you say well, about hey, that? If, if they got to say that, I mean, you know, hell I can give my phone number, you know I, I don't care who you are, I'll answer the phone if I can help you. But they can call me anytime they want. And uh, I, I've got numerous phone numbers in my, in my phone that we can call of drivers that quit. Not just criminals like me got fired because of that bull crap, but drivers that just quit because of the bull crap. Drivers, I, I got one, and I'm not going to call his name. I'm going to call him Hippie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's, a New York, he's a New York guy. He's got long hair. Yeah, we're going to call him Hippie. Okay. He's been there 14 years. Mm, that's a long time. 14 years Hippie's been there. Okay. Hippie just quit. And when he put his notice in, I want to ask you a question. How many phone calls do you think he got from anybody in that office asking him, hey, what's going on? Why'd you put your notice in? Is there anything we can do? Ask, ask me how many people called him. Uh, how many? Zero. How many people call him? No one. Nada. When Four. he got to the yard to turn his truck in, my old driver manager was talking to him, and he told her, "said Hey, nobody even called me." And then she's like, "Are you kidding me?" And then she went inside and said, "Why didn't anybody call?" Well, their excuse was, "Well, oh, I thought so and so called. I thought Brian called. I thought Ryan called. Oh, I thought Joe called." Nobody called it because everybody thought everybody else called. So, so they let a 14 year veteran walk away. Here's here's and a, instead of trying to fix it. Here's a 14 year veteran, a 14 year driver with a good record, didn't get called mm -hmm. in the office for anything. He decided to leave, and nobody and and nobody in the office questioned that. Like, like no what, what can we what can we do to keep you? 14 year driver no way he had no repercussions he had no late loads no late deliveries that was his fault he had a flawless record there i've known this man for years i talk to him every day on the phone that man calls me every day to check on me and uh yeah nobody called that man nobody wow man. another gentleman 
I'm going to call him Hollywood. He knows who he is if he hears this. Okay. Hollywood. Hollywood. Six years. Six years. Okay. They brought a guy in. He was on an account uh, on a dedicated run. They brought a new guy in, and a new guy started some issues with this guy. And he's one of the new guy is one of the click that kissing up ass, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So when Glenn got to the yard, they suspended him for a week, and they didn't do nothing to the other guy. And it takes two to tango, if you know what I mean. Right. We're going to leave it at that. But anyway, Glenn was there, I think, six years. He put his notice in, and the same thing. Nobody called him. Man. All right, so Cambria, based on the the conversation that you that you did have with uh, with Smith Transportation, uh, would you would you be into? Mm-mm. 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 You ain't even gotta finish that statement, baby. No. Hey, I'm gonna answer your baby. question before you ask me. And I and, and I give you. I give you the answer in four different languages. English, no. Spanish, no. French, when no. German, nine. Okay? She said, and she, you said, you said, the wait, fuck wait, no. wait a minute, you said Spanish, no. No, ain't, ain't no, ain't, ain't no in Spanish is is a different way of saying it. <laughs> no. Hey man, no is no. No. <laughs> no. No in Spanish is no. No in English is no. <laughs> no I'm, I'm in not. French is window. And no I, in nine is I mean no in German is nine. All right, what 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 you was about to say, uh, James? I, I'm going to put it in a better way than she put it. If they called me and apologized to me, mm-hmm. and that was my only opportunity to go back to work in the truck. Mm-hmm. I guess that's it for you and working in the truck, honey. I'm, I'm going to have to retire, and I would have to go get my camping gear and take my ass to the woods and live in the woods off the land mm-hmm. before I would go back to work for them. So you I would lose everything I own before I go to work for them. So you 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 wouldn't you you, you wouldn't suggest uh Smith transportation. No, I wouldn't. Alright. I ain't never been there and I wouldn't prefer nobody to go there. Because like I said, like what recruiter actually asks you for your driver's license number, your social security number, your address, what's your first, middle, and last name? Um, how long you been driving? Well, Ooh, there you what, are. What, well, what? wait, wait, wait. Now, as far as the basics, like, you know, what's your name, uh, what state you live in, and all like that. But I kind of agree with you. I mean, you yeah, when, yeah. What's I, your, I, what's I, your I, name I, and what state? I, I kind of agree with you when he asked for the social security number, like. Bro. Yeah, you asking after right. the patient questions, you trying to slick, you trying to slick, um, type up an application while I'm on the phone. And I could do all the application so over there. And... I could have did, the, you, you could do the application, which I, I will go ahead and say, you know, mention all that at close to no, the end. No, what I mean, but, but you could do the application is... over, you know, you could do the application over the, uh, over on their website, and then you could have put all but that. But that's the point. They don't even need that, though, Sean. All he got to do, all he all he really needed to know was what was your first, middle, last name, what's your address, the social security number. He going to run an application on you right then to see what your dad report it looked like. Right, but he basically said, but, but listen, though, what he said was, what he said was, and why he was asking that, he said he was, he said he just wanted to verify that you was a driver because he gets calls, they get calls from other recruiters to see what they are about. And James, and, 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 and James, remember, 
But if you believe that, you a stupid b- you believe it. And, and, and there ain't nobody calling them. Ain't nobody finna call the other company. What you, what, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to be honest with you. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, there there are other recruiters that does call other companies. But who? But who in the world? But, but look, though, you got to fight with your mind and not with your ears. Well, who going to actually? Okay, now, the vice president going to actually tell you, oh, recruiters be calling me all the time to figure out what I have going on with my company. Who, what vice president you know going to actually do some like that? None I, of them. I I don't know because I actually exactly, you know exactly because there are none. Well, I there I, are none. I I don't know, but again, there 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 does be other recruiters that does call other companies just to see what their company is about. It's like more. I forget what it's called. Uh, what it's, competition? No, it's not they conversation. Have a competition. No, the competition. Yeah, that's part of, that's part of it. But it's it's another word. It, it it'll come to me in a minute. But um, Mr. James, please tell him because maybe he'll like to hear more from a male than a female. Oh apparently, my he don't, God! He still, you care less what I'm saying, right? I now, did not say I did not it. care less what you said. I said that there are other companies. Uh, uh, there are, it's not, it's it's like secret shoppers. It's all over. Like somebody from Macy's goes into JC Penney's and just see what their operations is like. So they can bring that information and see what, the, how they can make their company better or, well, or whatever the case. But I guarantee you, they not going up there to ask the manager, well, hey, how you doing? What's your name? Uh, where you from? How long you been here? What you know? What are you all doing on a daily basis? I, 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 I guarantee you, they I don't. Ask the I, I, well, I, I, I don't believe that they're doing that. And again, Cambria, I do agree with you on the fact that the 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 general questions, the name, the state that you stay in, I get that. But your CDL number and your social security number, yeah, that's. Yeah, that's that's a little bit more, especially when I'm just calling I'm, just I'm to get, real. you know, just doing that's my right. research. I understand. I for get real. what like, you. I'm, I right. agree with you on that one. Well, you shut up. I'm talking to Mr. James now. Oh, Mr. James, correct me if I'm wrong. They're not gonna just ask them questions. Am I right or wrong? Hello. Wait, is he still here? Uh, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I've got to go though. This, this has been fun. You got any more questions? Cause I got, to, I got to get out of here and finish up. Yeah, she, she just go ahead and ask them, uh, Cambria. Oh no, I was just saying, but Mr. James, like you said, the recruiters, and the, you know, like you said, ain't nobody calling them. Cause if they were, they wouldn't be asking them type of questions if they were the recruiters. They would just send one of their employees over there to yeah. apply. And then come back. They wouldn't be calling themselves. No, so that's a company no, that issues with their company. Well, they're not gonna do that. That man lied to you, so he can so he can get your that information. Go ahead and run your tech. And when you pull in the application, or once he see what's on your debt while y'all having that conversation, because it only takes about three minutes to get that debt back. While y'all in that conversation, to make up any kind of like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. As soon as you get over there and you done, met, you done quit your cup and made your plans. Size of the there, engine. Before you even get out of orientation, just as show as out, just as show as Africa is hot near the equator, and just as show as there 22 hours of daylight in the summer in Alaska, you don't get shit home before you even get a truck because something you did that they said was okay don't be out because it's not going to be okay before you even step in the door. And they done made money off you for orientation. And you still not going to get no money from them. Well, hey. Why? Because J- you failed first day orientation. Hey, James. Hey, thanks for stepping up in the building, man. I really do appreciate you. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely stay safe out there, bro. 
uh, and like I said before, I do got you in my prayers because you know you try you 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 already beat it cancer three times, so this is going to be the fourth time that you're going to beat it, bro. You damn right, I'm going to beat it. Well, well, I'm sorry that you're going through cancer, Mr. Lane, but I am praying, and you are already healed in the name of the Lord. I appreciate that, darling. Like I told him, I got God on my side, so I know I'm good. That's what's Amen. up. Amen. Amen. That's what's up. James, uh, James, you take it easy, and I'll talk with you later, bro. All right, man. All right. You be good out there. All right, I will. I will. You be good, too, bro. Y'all be safe. Yes, sir. You too. 